What's up, this is Ryan Gallant, and we're about to watch my Transworld first love part from 2005. So it starts with a classic uh, Transworld voiceover. Did you know that that was going to be part of your part, and, and what were you saying? I don't know if I knew or not. Definitely back then, I would just do whatever they told me, basically, too. You know what I mean? I wasn't going to question it, so I think I just probably showed up, and John just said, like, we're going to record some talk, or I don't even know who recorded that, but... So, I mean, there's plenty of people that are like, what, you're how old, and you still ride a skateboard? Which is funny because that's 18 years ago, so I was actually really young, but I still do, and I'm way older than I was, and I thought I was old then. But it's like they'll never really understand it. Like I could explain to them why I love it, and those people will never get it. Just vibes, bro. And get into it, know exactly the feeling. Like I know that feeling, dude. Like you get home from school. And oh, the double bench trick. Like, yes, people seem to love that. All day you're just thinking. It's funny when you film a video part that those things that you like don't plan on, like that was a mess around clip, and I feel like so many people would like bring that up randomly. Oh, Tori Pines. Who filmed your part? I think mostly John. Mostly John, and then I know we got some Greg Hunt footage in here. How did you get chosen to get a transal part? I don't, you know, during those years, somehow I was just like heavy in the trans world mix with like the crew of people. Like ever since I came out to San Diego, I feel like everybody I skated with was like down with trans world. And uh, John Holland was always a really close friend and lived with, you know, Shaniat sometimes. And uh, I don't know how I got into the video, but super psyched I did, especially cause like, I don't know. I think they definitely, videos in general over time got like not as big a deal as they were, you know, but like trans world videos were like, that was the video to be in back then. Like getting a clip and four on one's cool but like if you got a trans world part that was like a whole different tier sort of you know so um did you notice it make a difference in like your your career after you got the uh part? i mean i think it was all around then was sort of like you know i guess you, the peak or whatever sort of for me you know yeah like just dc and all these sponsors and yeah having a trans world part i think everybody just thought like okay you know we can like put some money into this kid and give him a shoe or whatever because he's gonna you know like the pieces were there at the time thank god i got in the video that rail was so good. What was that rail called? Scripts. Yeah, that rail was so good. A lot of cool stuff went on that. That ledge I never went back to is somewhere in San Diego. I don't know if it still exists. Yeah. This spot's right next to my house. I think uh, James Riff cut all those rails out maybe and uh, made those gaps skatable for us. For years on top of the DC vert ramp, there was like a rail and it was from that gap. Yeah, like somehow got stored in my yard, I think for a night and then somebody else picked it up and like it just ended up on the DC vert ramp. They cut out a street spot and it became a vert spot. Those benches were really good. I remember seeing Chris Dobstaff there one day. I think this place still exists. Nolly Varial Flip Nose Manual. I don't think I've ever done that since. This school, best skate school. And a switch backside flip. I don't do that often either. Nolly backside flip down in Cardiff or something. Ooh, basketball. That's another thing people always talk about that right there, right? Like how that basketball turned into like the rock or whatever. Have you ever, you noticed that? The basketball goes in and then it turns into a thing on the ground. Oh, I've never. You never noticed that? Noticed yeah, that. I never noticed it either till somebody like said it to me like way back then. And so I've noticed it ever since. Barcelona, that's a good time out there. Chet Thomas grind, more hard flip action. What else? Oh, this school. Is that Earl Warren? Is that what it's called? So fun to go there and ride up and down that hallway. Or not up it. You walk up it. And that part wasn't as fun, but riding down it is so fun. Going at night was totally like a John Holland thing, I think, though. I think he had like a visual thing he wanted to do there. What was that? Sacramento before that? Oh yeah, down down in San Diego. Another another Nolly Varial flip. A little Texas rail. I barely landed that, as you can tell when I roll out of frame. That elbow was good. And then this line. This was another one that, you know, I wasn't thinking when I did it. And then, like, I think that front side half cab or whatever you call it was, like, the trick everybody talked to me about forever after. I'm like, really? <laughs> I got of the whole video. <laughs> like, but what about this? You know, like, it's funny what becomes the things people remember, you know? I remember seeing Beeble after the video came out and I didn't think Beeble liked me back then. I was like scared of Beeble and stuff kind of. I remember seeing him at some like party like after trade show or something and he was like, yo Glant, that line. 
and you like called out that line in the video and I was like, oh shit, Beeble approved that line. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> like, but yeah, same thing when I was doing that line, it was like no thought that like, this is the line of my part, you know? <laughs> I actually broke John Holland's fisheye doing that line. See, really? things are coming back as I remember. So that spot, yeah, it's the dentist office down in Encinitas. And uh, I don't know what trick I broke it on. Somehow filming that line, I hit his fisheye bad enough to where he had to drive home, which thankfully was only like 10 minutes away in La Costa to get a new fisheye. Yeah, and Chipotle had just got built across the street. So I remember going over to Chipotle and like slamming a burrito and like a Corona. And then going back, you know, like 20 minutes later, like rewarming up like, <laughs> here we go again. Like, cause we have been trying that line for a minute. I kept getting to the stairs, but the landing on that brick, those stairs is like trash, you know? So I would land and stick all the time. And then, yeah, we landed it post burrito and brewski and Blayback always around back then. Yeah, I was always rolling with Blabes. Best photographer to have just hanging out always, you know? That spot was really good too. Camo shirt. I was definitely hanging out with Welsh. Oh, the triple set. It's so funny, I feel like the, the triple set in trans world videos, you know what I mean? We're such like a time era kind of like, gotta go to the triple set and get a clip and get in the trans world video if you're lucky. Who picked your song? The song, John Holland picked it. And it's funny because I remember listening to that song like years prior in LA and thinking it was like a good song and then totally forgetting you know? And I probably would have picked some garbage rap song at the time. And I remember going in one night when John was working there editing in that dark little room and he had it just like already go into that song, you know? And it was like, I wasn't gonna touch it, you know? It was like, it was perfect. I'm so glad he picked it. Cause it's like, out of all the songs I skated to ever, it's like, that's, I feel like it's just makes the part sort of, you know? So yeah, that was a John Holland call travel or film with like the other guys in the video? Or? You know, only up in Sacramento. I remember going up to Sacramento a few times and skating like with Richard and Omar, but I didn't go on the Spain trip. They did a Spain trip and I didn't end up going on that one, but I went with DC like around the same time. And so Greg ended up giving all my footage over to the Trans World video, which was very nice of him, you know, but DC obviously wanted, you know, to help me and make me look good in the, the Trans World video, so. But I didn't go on the Barcelona trip that they all went on. I was on a separate one. When's the first time you saw the part? Probably the premiere. Like, I don't I don't think I saw the whole part prior. I think I saw a little bit, like it showed me little um, bits and pieces. And then the funny part was during the premiere too, I think something happened. Like there was some sort of altercation or some something weird. I was up on the balcony at the premiere, but like something was happening down below. So I remember like my part was kind of quiet. Like people weren't really cheering and shit. And I was like sitting up on the balcony, like, oh damn, that's not really hitting the way I was planning on it hitting. But then later on people were like, no, somebody like something was going on down below that was like taking some attention away, you know? But uh, so I didn't really pay attention to it much at the premiere either because it's like it's hard to watch a video at a premiere kind of but but yeah I like it I mean of all my video parts I think that's my favorite I remember filming for this was like so mellow it wasn't even a thing because like I said I was just always with John you know so it was like it was a normal thing like just go with John like go up to SF and sleep at some dude's house or whatever for a week with Richard and stuff you know and just get clips and I didn't realize the magnitude I don't think until later in life that I was like oh man that was a, that was a trans world <laughs> you know what I mean like you always wish you could have tried harder or something, I think. But thank you, Transworld, for letting me be in there. I appreciate that.